In the 1960s, the University of Sydney decided that it needed to update Ciliac and they decided to replace it with an English electric KDF-9. The KDF-9 was an interesting machine because it was the first British solid state computer which actually had some influence from Australia. In 1957, Charles Hamblin, a professor of philosophy at the New South Wales University of Technology, using Uticom, designed one of the world's first programming languages, later called George, which introduced reverse Polish notation. He also invented a compiler for the new language using Alan Turing's push-pop stack approach. In 1957, Hamblin presented his stack concept at the second Australian computer conference where English electric engineers were gathered. The engineers took these concepts and rolled them into their KDF-9 computer, which was first delivered in 1963. So when the University of Sydney purchased their KDF-9, they took advantage of Hamblin's contribution to computing. This became the University of Sydney's main machine for the next decade. The machine that School of Physics decided upon was an English electric machine. It was the KDF-9. And Ciliac was being uh, moved aside, so yes. People were beginning to think, well, vacuum tubes are a bit unreliable and stuff like that. We should start using transistors, because transistors had sort of just kind of appeared on the market. They were ridiculously expensive. It had a core memory, one for the main store and another one for the stacks. The only problem one could say with the stack as implemented in the KDF-9 was that the stack was finite. The KDF-9 probably owed a lot of us to the design to Charles Hamlin's uh, dissertation on reverse Polish notation and stack back in 57. The English electric people in attendance thought it was a really great idea and went back and designed the KDF-9 based on it. The thing that bothered some of us about the KDF-9 was that it seemed to take them a long time to get into production. But it was supposed to be a very fast machine. It was stack-oriented, as he said to us out at Kensington. If you've got a program that takes a long while over here, take it over to the KDF-9. It'll run a thousand times faster. Emblin's work has to have been the world first. In Australian computing, he was outstanding. I don't think he's been subsequently given the credit to which he should be accorded. Sydney University received one in 1963. It took it until 1964 to get it working properly. With the KDF-9, they now had a significantly faster machine. With Ciliac, the engineer who ran Ciliac, a man called Brian Swire, who had been in charge of the building of Ciliac right from the beginning, added to Ciliac some very sophisticated tape reader and writer machines because tape was the only way to get a lot of data on and off the machine rather than just having it in the 1024 words of memory that you could store in the Williams Kilburn tubes. As you're working through a program, you have to get in new data, calculate it with it, shuffle it back off to tape. I'm aware that Ciliac was connected to the KDF-9. So what they did was that they turned Ciliac into the tape machine, the controller. KDF-9 then becomes the CPU and does all the, arith the arithmetic and things like that. At the same time, you need to have somebody controlling all of this. So they bought a Control Data 1700, which they used as the hub for this incipient network that they were building. Now the KDF-9 was transistorized. All of those machines were now transistorized except for the Ciliac. They then bought a mini computer called a PDP-8 by Digital Equipment Corporation. And the DEC PDP-8 was to be used as a graphics display. So now what you've done is that you've distributed your computing around a number of machines. There's a central hub, which basically is the machine that runs the, the punch tape or the cards and gets all the data and, and sets of instructions and tells each of the machines what to do. Everything's routed through the central machine and then off to the other machine. So now your bus involves four or five modules. Then IBM gave the computing department a 4090, which had been used at Lucas Heights. And that was used to do serious calculation. And it was a very good arithmetic machine. So that was now your mathematics device 
your KDF-9 does all your sort of general organising and thing, and the supervisor is the 1700, and the Siliac is your tape machines, and the PDP-8 is your graphics displays. You read more about American organisations putting a lot of different machines together, but that was one of the biggest conglomerations I've heard of in Australia. And what you could now do, they bought a plotter and they built this network, which is essentially just a bunch of wires with, at each machine, the interpreter that allows the, a, whatever the protocol being put on the wires to turn that into instruction code for the machine. So the machines can actually read the, each, talk to each other and you've got a network. And this network is prob possibly not the first network, but it's one of the very earliest networks. But the significant thing about it is that this in large scale is now what is inside pretty much every CPU chip. The PDP-8 was used to do graphics work and the beginnings of graphics in Australia first is the use of the KDF-9 to drive mathematical plots, which are sort of basically large waveforms that have been turned in on themselves in various ways and made to look like pretty kind of mathematical shapes and things like that. The legacy is in emphasising the need to get on in scientific and engineering work and the like with the joining of the rest of the world, catching up, getting ahead of them even. A lot of our overseas organisations are racing ahead of Australia if we don't have this processing facility.